Hello, I am a corporate CEO. As you know, we received record profits this year. Our shareholders are very pleased. And as a thank you, we will be providing pizza this Wednesday at 2 p.m. through 2.30 p.m. in the break room on the 12th floor. Please be considerate of your fellow employees when taking this pizza so everyone can have at least one slide. Please ignore the rumors of layoffs. Don't believe third-party rumors. Also, there will be a mandatory one-hour Zoom meeting on Friday at 7 a.m. Now, roll that beautiful bean footage. Yo, welcome back to another episode of CX Riot Radio, where we talk about customer experience and stuff, all in a hyper-caffeinated state. Before we begin the episode, I just want to, uh, you know, ask a little favor, a little thing, if you could, if you'd be so kind, if you could, you know, do the thing. Where you uh, like, comment, subscribe, rate, review, and share the show so we can make the show grow. I think that's a fair ask, right? It's a fair ask in this day and age. I made you some content. That's okay. That's all right. Please share. Please. I'll, I'll give you anything. All right, so anyway, for this episode, I want to talk about return to office, RTO, the big drive that's happening right now across corporate America. Isn't it a lovely drive, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, ghosts and ghouls, squirrels and lemurs, and everybody in between? Isn't it wonderful? Well, is it? I don't know. As I wrote clear back in whenever I wrote this in the Blue Collar Call Center uh, back in uh, midway through 2022 uh, I wrote this. A lot of people fear that you can't have a good company culture if you're not all crammed into the same room like sardines breathing the same air and smelling the same fish curry that Gary just heated up in the break room microwave. But you see, that's wrong. Dead wrong. Now, in the book, I go on to talk about World of Warcraft. And I don't mean current day retail World of Warcraft. No, no, no. I'm talking about old World of Warcraft. The one where World of Warcraft Classic is almost there, right? It's almost to the point of old school wow. But where you had to get 40 people from all over the world. See, even more difficult than most companies, right? All onto the same schedule. All these people had to have specific skills, unless you were a hunter, then you could just be like, you know, AFK or whatever. I kid, I kid, my hunt-tard friends. It is what it is. So, but you had to get all these people, train them up, make sure they're all leveled, make sure they're all geared. It's a lot of logistics, especially when they're all from different time zones. All in that, all pointed towards the same goal, all trying to have the same objective. So, there you go. Whether it's Molten Core or AQ40, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So, let's talk. Let's talk about that. And I saw a LinkedIn post um, earlier from, I think it's Rory Stevens. It could be Corey Stevens. It's kind of a cut off at the top. But... 
I'm going to read it to you because I thought it was funny. If your business is struggling and you need to make money quick, here's what to do. One, force all remote employees to be in office five days a week. This will lead many people to leave, especially single parents. Easy payroll win. Number two, give strong performers an impossible amount of work to do, ideally the workload of three to four full-time employees. They will immediately start looking elsewhere and you won't have to offer anyone severance. Number three, times are tough and it's time we let our teams feel it. Decrease benefits. The wellness of your people is their responsibility. Pull back and save money on the nice-to-haves like certain healthcare benefits and 401k matching. Insurance for dependents is on them. Their kids don't even work for you. The break room that everyone loves. This is number four. Axe it. Stop stalking it. What was once the bright spot in the office needs to become a memory. If someone wants a snack, it's on them. It's $5 right there. All right. So that was that LinkedIn post. So let's say you have a team of call center folks, right? Or any, any kind of office folks, right? That have been remote. They had a pretty good run at it. Their culture was strong. Productivity was high. Yada, 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 right? So here's something that I prepared if that ever happened. And I wrote this a while ago. So, all right. This situation sucks. You're being told to come back to the office or get out. That's a hard line stance. And I know it's got a lot of you pissed off. But we've got to face this head on. It is what it is. We can't let our culture rot away because of this shift. So let's talk about how we're going to handle this without any bullshit. First off, let's acknowledge the anger. You're mad. You're frustrated. You might even be feeling a little betrayed. And you know what? That's completely valid. The remote setup worked well for all of us. We had flexibility, we balanced work and life, and productivity was through the roof. Now we're being told to give that up. It's natural to feel like this is a step backwards. Executives, listen up. If there's any executives who are planning this, right, you need to get this, okay? Communication isn't just a checkbox. You can't just send edicts out into the void, right? People need to know the real reasons behind the decision. None of that corporate jargon that you love so much. It's about If it's about better collaboration, say that. If it's about maintaining control, admit it. People respect honesty even if they don't like the message. And this isn't just a one-time announcement. This has to be an ongoing conversation, so weekly updates, open Q&A sessions, anonymous feedback channels, you've got to keep the lines of communication wide open. People need to feel heard, even if the answers aren't always what they want to hear. So, now, we're saying come back or leave, but within those boundaries we need to find some flexibility. Hybrid models, staggered schedules, remote work days not luxuries they're necessities in 2024 or whatever year you're listening to this in if someone needs a few days at home because of childcare, or let's say their car breaks down make that work we're not compromising the return we're humanizing it so team bonding can't feel like a mandatory fun day at camp that is cringe and nobody likes it it needs to be organic. So casual lunches, coffee breaks, after work beers. Uh, make the reconnecting in person something people actually look forward to or don't have it at all. Right? Encourage managers to have real personal check-ins with their teams. It's about rebuilding connections naturally, not forcing them. 
People need to feel valued, especially now. This isn't time for the generic employee of the month bullshit. Get creative. Public shutouts, spot bonuses, extra time off, professional development opportunities. Recognize people's efforts in ways that matter to them. Highlight the wins, big and small. Make people feel seen and appreciated, especially during this transition. Now, executives, talking back to you, this is where you prove your worth. Don't just talk the talk about culture and balance. Walk the walk. Show up, engage, be visible. Don't tell other people to return to the office when you're still sitting on a beach house, right? Practice what you preach about work-life balance, open communication, and positivity. Your actions will set the tone for the entire company. Now, we get it. Losing the freedom we've had is tough. But we can soften the blow with hybrid options, flexible hours, and remote days. So, commuting challenges, long, expensive commutes suck. Companies, you can offer commuter benefits, flexible start times, or even some remote days to ease the pain. Child care and family obligations. Balancing work and family is a struggle. We all know that. Provide resources, support, and flexibility to help manage those responsibilities. Social and team integration. For those who started remotely, feeling like an outsider is a real concern. Buddy systems, mentorship programs, and frequent check-ins can help bridge that gap. <clears throat> Productivity and mental health. Uh, keep workloads manageable, especially during the transition. Offer mental health resources and be proactive about supporting your team's well-being. And here's some actionable steps that you can take. Transparent communication, so weekly updates, open Q&A sessions, anonymous feedback channels, flexibility. Once again, those hybrid models, staggered schedules, remote work days, work with people on their schedule. Um, organic social connections, casual lunches, coffee breaks, after work hangouts, if people are open to it and want to do it. Don't force it. Don't have a co mandatory company um, happy hour because that's cringe and weird. All right. Creative recognition, public praise, spot bonuses, extra time off, professional development, leadership example, be visible, engage regularly, and practice work-life balance. Uh, the, tra the transition is tough. There's no getting around that. But it's also a chance to redefine how we work together and maintain our culture. By being honest, flexible, and generally caring about each other, we can come out of this stronger. Let's not let this shift break us. Instead, let us use it to prove how resilient and adaptable we are. So, if you feel, or if you fear, that your culture will be destroyed, and your morale dashed against the rocks, because you were pretty successful as a remote team in holding up your company culture right and with communication and with productivity and with efficiency if you fear that's going to change by returning to office don't let it become a self-fulfilling prophecy first of all second of all do what you can to preserve it right and ease into rto don't go all at once don't give edicts like You'll be in by this day or you're fired. That kind of thing. Right? Have a wave. Have it come in waves. Have it come start off hybrid a couple days a week and then ramp up from there if that's what you're going to do. Now, I don't necessarily suggest doing this. I don't see what the difference is. I think if, you, uh, if your work is good and your work is fine and you're happy with it and you're doing a good job, you should be able to do it from anywhere. Now, that... And that's not all jobs, of course, but it is what it is. So that's today's episode. Let me know what you think. I'll see you next time.